Hi, Assalamualaikum. Let's continue with our Chapter 5, Chemical Bonding, Molecular Geometry. I am your Madam Ruby. We are going to explain valence shell electron pair repulsion theory by drawing the basic molecular shapes which are linear, trigonal, planar, tetrahedral, trigonal, bipyramidal and octahedral. Then, we are going to predict and explain the shapes of molecule and bond angles in molecules with lone pairs, which are V-shaped, trigonal pyramidal, T-shaped distorted tetrahedron, linear, square pyramidal and square planar. Molecular geometry is a 3D arrangement of atoms in a molecule which will affect physical and chemical properties. We predict the molecular geometry by using the valential electron pair repulsion theory. In studying the molecular geometry, valential electron pair repulsion theory states that the valence electron pair surrounding a central atom repel one another. Thus, the orbital containing those electron pairs are oriented to be as far apart as possible. The molecular geometry depends on the number of bonding pairs and lone pairs at the central atom. There are two types of electron at the central atom, which are bonding pairs of electron and lone pairs of electron. And then there are three types of repulsive forces. The weakest is the bonding pair versus bonding pair repulsion, whereas lone pair versus bonding pair repulsion is stronger. And the strongest one is lone pair versus lone pair repulsion. Molecules can be divided into two categories. The central atom, which has no lone pairs, for example, the carbon dioxide molecule. And the second one, whereby the central atom has one or more lone pairs. For example, NF3, which has the molecular geometry trigonal pyramidal. Let's predict the molecular geometry of a compound. Firstly, you need to draw the Lewis structure of the molecular ion. Secondly, you have to calculate the electron at the central atom and determine whether they are bonding pairs of lone pairs. And then finally, you have to determine the shape by using the SEPR method. How? The valence electron pair surrounding a central atom will repel one another. So once you determine how many bonding pairs are lone pairs, are there, they should be arranged to be oriented as far apart as possible. And for ion, you have to draw a bracket, a square bracket, and then you show the charge of the ion outside the bracket. These are the five basic shapes that you have in your book. In page 136, you can see that all the linear, trigonal, planar, tetrahedral, trigonal, bipyramidal, and octahedral has their own angle. Let's look at table 5.3. And the first compound is BeCl2, which is a linear compound. This compound has two atoms bonded to central atom, chlorine. And the central atom beryllium has no lone pairs. So how do we draw the shape of BeCl2? Firstly, we draw the central atom beryllium. And then this two straight line is representing the two bonding pairs. And then we draw chlorine and two chlorine. We don't have to draw the lone pairs for the terminal atom. We need to draw the lone pair, if any, for central atom only. And don't forget to write down the name of the molecular shape for beryllium dichloride. The second basic shape is trigonal planar, whereby the example we gave is boron trifluoride. Let's learn how to draw boron trifluoride. Firstly, we draw the central atom boron in the middle, and then we have three straight lines. One, two, three. 
whereby it is representing the bonding pairs that connected boron, the central atom, to three terminal atom, fluorine. Don't forget to write down the name of the shape is trigonal plana. The next basic shape is tetrahedral, which is methane, CH4. Notice that the angle for methane is 109.5 for all four bonding pairs. To draw methane is a bit tricky because we have to draw it three-dimensionally. So firstly, we draw carbon in the middle, it's a central atom, and then we can see that there are two lines that is on the plane in front of our eyes. So this is the two bonding pairs that we can see clearly. The third bonding pair that we can see even clearer is the one that is moving towards you, moving towards us. So this is the one that we are going to use for wedges lines. And then you can see there is one white hydrogen atom at the back of the black carbon. That one we have to represent by the dotted lines because that bonding pair is actually moving away from you. So this is how we draw the tetrahedral of methane. Phosphorus pentachloride, PCL5, is an example of a trigonal bipyramidal. We call it bipyramidal because it looks like there are two pyramids on top of each other. The angles are 90 degrees and 120 degrees. When we hold PCL5 like this, we are going to see that they are one, two, three straight lines that are on the plane in front of us. So we give one CL each for these three lines. And then there is one line that is very clear moving towards us. It is coming to get you. This is a clearer bonding pair that you are going to see connected to CL. And then the last one is the one that is the dotted lines which we cannot see going away from us. This is trigonal by pyramidal. Voila. Sulfur hexafluoride, SF6, is an example of an octahedral. All of the bonds have 90 degree angle between each other. Now let's draw sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur would be in the middle as the central atom. There is one and two only. Lines on the plane in front of you. And then you have the wedges line because there are two lines coming towards you. And the other two is going away from you. There is your octahedral. Table 5.4 shows the molecular geometries of derivative shapes coming from the five basic shapes. So let's look at SO2, which is a bent shape, and trigonal pyramidal for ammonia. The first step that we need to do is draw the Lewis structure for sulfur dioxide. Then we draw the central atom with one lone pass, a dative bond connected to oxygen, a double bond connected to another oxygen. This is your bent shape. For ammonia, 
the nitrogen in the middle has another one lone pair also and it has one bonding pair that is moving towards us one single bond that is on the plane in front of us and one dotted lines whereby this bonding pair is moving away from us this shape is called trigonal pyramidal now let's look at h2o which is a bent shape sf4 which is a seesaw and IF3 minus, which is a T shape. The molecular shape of water can be drawn by drawing the two lone pairs first on top of it, and then you're going to have two straight lines connected to hydrogen. This is bent shape. And for SF4, you have S in the middle there. You have a double lone pairs of electrons there. One and two single lined on the plane in front of you. And this single bond is moving towards you. This is going away from you. So this molecule is a C saw. Okay, what about IF3 minus? I is the central atom. It has two lone pairs on top of it. So we draw that first. And then there is three single line that we can see on the plane in front of you. And for ion, don't forget to draw the square bracket with its ion now let's draw ie minus a linear brf5 a square pyramidal and xcf4 a square planar so i3 minus has two bonding pairs and three lone pairs so you draw all the one, two, three, four, five pairs of electrons valence share, and then you draw the terminal atom. For this, is it? It's an ion, so linear is the shape. For this one, Br has one lone pair on top and then one straight line at the bottom, two wedges lines going towards you and two dotted lines going away from you. This is a square pyramidal. Finally, the last molecule is Xe in the middle, has two lone pairs on top and on the bottom, and the wedges line is going towards you, and then a dotted line is going away from you. This is how you draw square planner. Alright, here is your homework. Please draw the geometrical shape of all the molecules in the slide. Now let's compare the bond angles of a molecule which has the same basic structure. Methane CH4 Ammonia in H3 and water H2O can be compared because all of them have the same number of electrons surrounding the central atom. We found that the bond angle for CH4 is the highest, which is 109.5, followed by NH3, 107.3, and water is 
having the smallest angle, which is 104.5. When you're going to answer a question like this, for example, compare the bond angle between CH4, NH3, and H2O molecules, you need to have 12 points altogether. So divide 12 with 3, you've got 4 marks for each molecule. CH4 has 4 bonding pairs of electron, 1 point. CH4 has equal bonding pair versus bonding pair repulsion, the second mark. And the bond angles is therefore 109.5, it's equal, and the shape of the molecule is tetrahedral. There goes your four points or four marks. You would have to discuss the same thing with ammonia, whereby you said NH3 has three bonding pairs of electron and one known pairs of electron, whereby the repulsion that exists is lone pair versus bonding pair repulsion together with bonding pair and bonding pair repulsion. But the strongest here is lone pair versus bonding pair repulsion, making the bond angle become smaller, which is 107.3, making the shape of the molecule trigonal pyramidal. H2O has two bonding pairs of electron and two lone pairs of electron. It has three types of repulsion forces. And the strongest repulsion is lone pair versus lone pair repulsion, making the bond angle becomes smaller even, which is 104.5 with the shape of molecule band shape. So you can see here again, Water has lone pair versus lone pair repulsion, making the bonding pair going down and having a smaller angle, which is 104.5 degrees. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Let's do a lot of exercises on drawing the molecular shapes of our molecules. Thank you very much. See you again soon. Bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa maghfiratuh wa ridwanuh ila yawmil akhir.